Gracie and Rachel on Soul Sisters. Thanks for coming. Thank Thanks you. for having us. Will you introduce yourselves so that people who are just listening know your voices? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I'm Gracie. And I'm Rachel. <laughs> you and I'm Dara. Yourself? And I'm Jesse. <laughs> First question I have for you guys is what was it like playing at Babe Fest? Babe Fest, it was horrible. No, it <laughs> a was, nightmare. It was a nightmare. Yeah, no, too many it was, women. It, too many women. Too much free individual <laughs> thinking. It was just empowerment. It was horrible. Is this a new was, festival? Do you know it's, it? Is it's it? Second, second, yeah, installation. And she did the first one last year in Buffalo, up at her like old Babe Fest kind of headquarters spot, Righteous Babe. Uh -huh. And now she's doing them. I guess it's a traveling thing she's planning to do different <clears throat> every year but yeah well, she's she's but this one was in provincetown this was in provincetown mm. which it's was also very just, on the money yeah, yeah. it was so on the money it <laughs> yeah. was it was really amazing yeah. at the beginning of women's week right oh my god right it was the, that was the initiation so the That's church was so all funny. like cast in these big beautiful pink lights and oh, yeah it was to share a stage with her and share the evening with her was just so unreal mm -hmm. um and she just brought so many great women together and yeah um we got to perform you know a little set um in Did the, she uh, book that the night? festival? Yeah, I mean it's her, it's her yeah. thing. Yeah, so this is a, a Lilith sort of resurrection in a way. Babe Fest. Yeah, I mean we've been talking about Lilith Fair. Were you guys? Oh yeah. You know, fans of that whole scene, and and we've been we've had a lot of guests who were part of it, and we've been saying like, why why don't they do it again? And yeah. what's happening with that? And it sounds like this is at least some type of iteration yeah. of that. Yeah. And I think, she, yeah, it's it's building on itself. And, you know, mm -hmm. she's putting out, you know, the new record and kind of getting out there with with this new, you know, like doing stuff with people like Bon Iver and, you know, other mm -hmm. different kinds of artists that I think are really interesting. And um, like poets, like she had, yeah, you know, she poets a comedian, and comedian. Ray and awesome. We were the only Andrew other Gibson. musical act besides her. So that was, uh, it, oh, was wow. it was interesting. I mean, there were only uh, four acts, but then there were speakers as well. And mm -hmm. with wow. um, Emily's List and some other activist communities. Um, yeah. But they were doing like panels during the day. Cool. Um, it's just a Robinson. full thorough wow. feminist Woman, yeah. Yeah. evening, you yeah, know, covered all really the bases. Cool. How did they find you guys? Do you know? Um, well, we're we're in the same family as Ani because our managers are all the same. So oh, people. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Cool. Um, and and yeah, we've we've hung with her a little bit and uh -huh. kind of. But this is our first time getting to perform for her, so that was okay. Really nerve wracking. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> and she was in the wings the whole time, so mm -hmm. we were like, uh oh. Yeah. So she likes it, but uh -huh. yeah, it was a really great great thing. Super positive experience. Yeah, yeah that's She's awesome. Hoping to us. join forces again yeah. soon. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. So you guys are, are known as being um, kind of like political feminist artists. A little bit. Yeah. yeah. Get, I'd say like less overt there. than Ani. You know, yeah. like we're not, we're not like well, She's been there. working at it a little yeah, longer. she's been at it a little longer. Yeah. But yeah, I think there's a lot of the kind of the duality of what we're doing as women kind of coming together. We use kind of the black and the white and the duality to hopefully kind of express some of the struggles that, mm -hmm. you know, we all deal with as, as humans. Mm -hmm. and as mental. Mental kind of awareness of mm -hmm. anxiety and that kind of stuff is definitely in our music and kind of yeah. standing up and hopefully. Self-empowerment. Yeah, self-empowerment. And dope. So let's let's talk about this piece that you guys wrote in September for Under the Radar. Yeah. Right. Um, because there's so much to unpack there and it's like all these <laughs> topics that we are always either circling with our mm -hmm. guests or like getting down to mm -hmm. but like trying to figure out how to articulate the problems and possible solutions and I feel like you guys just wrote it so succinctly in this one piece. So uh, the piece was called Soundtracking the Re or this is what they titled it Soundtracking the Resistance Gracie and Rachel on Music Industry Misogyny and Mansplaining um, and so I want to ask you guys about a few parts of it if I may um, the first one is you kind of call out this dangerous habit of convenient thinking mm -hmm. and I was wondering if you guys could like talk a bit about what you meant by that yeah I mean I think convenient thinking is 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 a big part of like we we're, we're kind of talking about like the history of this just that like it's easy to kind of just make excuses for our a lot of behaviors and beyond just you know the male female kind of dichotomy mm -hmm. um but but that like we've gotten used to it with our collaborators and people that we witness every night on stage and interacting with you know sound engineers or people on the road that kind of conveniently just don't presume that we kind of can be the women in in, in control mm -hmm. um, or what they've heard is what yeah. they expect to hear again right. or what they read is what they 
you know, expect to just see in front of them. You mean from you or from different bands? From us and other bands as well, I would say. Mm -hmm. It's just like a convenient way of mixing us. That right. is catered, catered, yeah, catered to what they're used to. Well, yeah. yeah, and like even just as simple as like Rachel, you know, Rachel's a front violinist and she's a front woman and that's not as common, which is totally understandable to see her. I mean, she's got a minimal vocal role, so maybe people don't assume that she's a front woman because she's not singing as much, but she's the front. We really always say like we're equal as she's a violinist that she sings with her violin mm -hmm. and that's really important My to voice. us and mm -hmm. that's her voice and, and that's her, that's, you know, a shared dual thing, even though I'm the one singing most of it, of the time. And we've really really stress that so many times and then time after time we get her put down in the mix like this and we just have to kind of like undo that thinking right um, which is hard right and then there's things like you know our name isn't put on the marquee because our our male counterpart you know is i don't know why but um, or they're assumed <laughs> that they're the, we're supporting yeah. them right yeah, yeah. when we're co-headlining which is you know a tour we just went on we had that happen at most venues and that was really hard to just have to fight you know you want to get there and just play your music and you mm -hmm. end up being a nag and and being kind of a you know downer and and that's just not a great way to start off any right. evening or any relationship with anybody yeah. so we're just trying to undo some of those patterns and and figure out ways to do them without hopefully you know coming off as critical but just like celebratory of like what we're doing and we kind of just have to prove our point by playing music and just showing them that we're going to hopefully kick some ass and that's yeah. that's how we do it but it's frustrating that we have to they, right, yeah. you know it takes that and you have time. to go through a little inconvenience to try and totally get, right. get over that yeah. way of thinking yeah you know, no i like that way of describing it because you know often the reaction people have when you confront this kind of thinking is like it's not that all men are misogynist or like mm -hmm. I don't hate women it's like it's not necessarily that right. conscious right it's just we need to like ask each other to think harder totally mm -hmm. and know? we yeah. fall into it too where we're apologetic in ways where we're like Wait, why are we apologizing right. for asking for this you know we fall into Something that convenient pattern and, and yeah exactly it's yeah. not it's not that there's these horrible guys out you know to get us um it's just that there's a way of you know what what we've all been trained to kind of exactly think. like a lot of people don't realize what they've been raised with and instilled yeah. with and yeah. so it's just like trying to force some perspective on yeah. your own behavior and the way that you relate to artists totally yeah. have you found a way of handling these situations that you employ like time and time again when you know okay this this sound guy is not going to hear us yeah and how do you handle that because the worst thing you can do is give an attitude back exactly. because they like hold your fate right. in their hands and it's you don't like, want to It's like the kill them. with kindness thing, but at the same time you don't want to kill with too much kindness because it's then you they you become like a pushover mm -hmm. in their eyes. So, but yeah, the attitude thing does not work. Right. Um, but I don't. I, I don't think. I think we keep our yeah. Cool pretty we keep well. our cool, but we're like uh, um, we, you know low key fuming. Eye contact. <laughs> yeah. That's like really. I'd cruel. say like, that's very scary for the a lot hardest of men. <laughs> Part, yeah. yeah, I know. That's why it can work. Yeah. I don't think <laughs> we figured out. At you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't think we have the perfect way. It's always give and take. That's why we're traveling. Because you try to preempt it. You yeah. try to like totally. come at it from the start. Like, I think she's right. a like she's yeah. a front woman too with the violin. We have to just overstress it more right. than we normally would. We're like, so mm -hmm. she like make her louder than me. If I say that, then it becomes actually more equal. Then you might be equal. Right. Yeah. <laughs> but that's that's kind of wild to have to do but we're going to travel with our own sound engineer on the next tour oh, and that changes amazing. everything and that you know he'll get the memo and yes. that'll be great <laughs> right. and he will know every night um so there's one level of just taking it to a new level that'll but be a game yeah. in general i just say for people audiences that don't trust you right away i think that's what like our kind of one of our first singles was about was it's called tiptoe and it's kind of about like tiptoeing around to have to then just like show them with your art and that's what we like to do is sneak up on you and hopefully you know change your perspective a little bit mm -hmm. of what you thought going into it um where you kind of doubted us so yeah we like we like just the music speaking for itself um but unfortunately sometimes you have to do a little more than that right? yeah it's just it's really impressive that you guys are like so conscious of this and um, proactive about it so early in your career i mean i know you've been playing music for a long time but there are artists who are more established and have been like touring for decades and are still trying to figure this mm. out so like cool. i don't know kudos to you guys <laughs> for like you. trying to attack this thanks for reading the, the article yeah, <laughs> yeah no of course. It's, it's, it's it's nice to have a partner in crime i think we both you yeah, know, balance each other yeah, out and right. yeah <laughs> she, i can speak for her and she can yeah. speak for me so right. it doesn't yeah i can be like can you be the mean one right now yeah yeah, yeah. and a witness you <laughs> see, or if like, I you saw that yeah that was crazy yeah exactly 
Yeah. Just blame That's each true. other. Yeah. Like, oh, yeah. Rachel was really upset about that. Yeah. You can just fix it. <laughs> totally. I don't want to deal with her We today. definitely do that. <laughs> we do. We really do take those roles on. It helps, it helps sometimes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Have a duo partner in crime. Mm-hmm. But then you also have the added kind of, as you said, like a violin just as an instrument up front is something an added sort of challenge for the yeah. for people to say wrap their brains around. It's mm-hmm. like we have two women. Yeah, they're both they, gonna sing they and one playing a violin, and they're both like we're supposed to make that all sound yeah. good. Like I think mm-hmm. yeah. there's a tendency for like when it's not a conventional setup, for there to be just like confusion and totally. like I'm not gonna try yeah. to make this. Yeah, yeah. So next article could be called unconventional conventionality. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just playing with those words. Yeah. Do you find it's better or worse depending on what city you're in? Mm. That's an interesting question. Or not really. I don't know. Well, well, I want to well, say you're, you're in a band, so you. I I don't want to. I wouldn't want to make that generalization because I feel like you can find like the most enlightened or just like not even enlightened, just you know, normal like sensible <laughs> man yeah. in any city not and like assumption. anywhere right. that you wouldn't totally. expect it. Yeah. So I wouldn't. Yeah, it's surprising. Like in our hometown, we always think it's going to be like the most perfect mm-hmm. situation because it's our hometown show. We're from the Bay Area, and we. San Francisco, we're going to play, like, the most amazing show. And we had a really hard time, you know, past couple times where yeah. we were just, like, expecting everything. It's always kind of the opposite of what you think. But then huh. again, you really just never know. You never know. You go into it really confident. Yeah. And it's a shit show. Right. <laughs> mm-hmm. um, but, yeah, I yeah. mean, yeah. Yeah, it's true. It's hard to hard to pin down. How long have you guys been in Brooklyn for? You still live we here? We just hit our five-year anniversary. Oh, oh happy oh. anniversary. October, too. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> um, but, yeah, we were... Uh, we were, yeah, five years ago, moved to a loft in Brooklyn. And you Together. were in, one of you was in Boston. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You were in Boston. I was in Boston. I was in, in Bloomington. Okay. Bloomington. Yeah. And we were kind of like courting like a long distance musical relationship. So uh-huh. we're both from Berkeley, California, and we would, went to different colleges and we would like have like FaceTime rehearsals, Skype uh-huh. rehearsals. Skype. I don't think so. FaceTime was yeah, a it thing wasn't back a thing. then. <laughs> I, think I, I was, was just trying not to plug stuff. Scri- yeah. Skype. I'm trying to like not do branding if I'm not getting paid. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> Skype's not paying me. But Skype, <laughs> we did video But calls. Skype, if you would like to yeah. sponsor this podcast. <laughs> we, we talk about you with every time we tell this story. <laughs> but we used to do video time uh, rehearsals, like, from our separate college, like, you know, atmospheres. Practice and then, rooms. Like, kind of keep the song seeds, yeah, alive from our practice rooms. And mm-hmm. we'd, like, she would fly out to Boston and play a show with me, and I would fly to Bloomington and play a show with her, and we kind of kept the thing alive, and then we'd go home for winter winter time and do shows and kept that like alive and then after we were done with school we we moved here about five years ago would mm-hmm. you say it sounded similar to what you're doing now or was it a very different thing happening i then? mean i think the foundation has always been the same piano and the violin piano, yeah violin mm-hmm. vocals <laughs> right. but so much more like ambient i think like the pedals that rachel's using and yeah. and kind of just the atmosphere the, the of the belly electronic. of the beast is much fuller and it uh-huh, was much right. more of just a you know, she's a classical violinist. I was just playing piano, my little piano singer songwriter songs, and we were just kind of figuring out how to do that. I mm-hmm. think now it's much more nuanced, hopefully. Mm-hmm. Um, I think yeah. also, like in the beginning, I was, I was not. I, it, my background is being a classical musician and uh-huh. having music right in front of me. You know, like I'm told what to play, and mm-hmm. so it was a little bit of a challenge. I didn't want to play any music in front of me. <laughs> yeah, she was <laughs> the opposite. More of like a, you, you know. come from a jazz, or what was your yeah, musical background? Sort of. I learned like Bach. You know. Cl- classical stuff when I was younger mm-hmm. and then jazz stuff as well I had a teacher who just kind of let me pick and choose little pieces and then I would start like breaking those apart and wanting to like write my own and then she would let me do that too so I didn't have as much of the theor- theoretical background as, as Rachel did and does um at all mm-hmm. but, but I also think in the beginning it was just I was my parts were more like compartmentalized and I was like this is what I'm playing and this is when I'm resting mm-hmm. <laughs> like mm-hmm. okay counting I have <laughs> <Right>. two bars <laughs> rest now I play yeah. you know, like, um, but now I think I'm much more always just adding texture and a belly or you know I'm just continually playing it's uh-huh. freer now yeah yeah and, and more collaborative much you know, more collaborative I used to bring her like a song and she would kind of make parts to that song or vice versa and now it's like we kind of come into things together and there's something brewing and we build it really on on that mm-hmm. kind of together mm-hmm. or we or we build it and then we take it away and somebody does something and we bring it back and there's that kind of push and pull with mm-hmm. the process now mm-hmm. but definitely always evolving yeah and now you've been living together mm-hmm. for five years yeah mm-hmm. wow. so how is that living working touring playing everything <laughs> it's exhausting. I mean, how is that? 
<laughs> it's a we lot. We hate each other. Yeah, we hate each other. <laughs> secretly. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's it's true. It's. I mean, it's a it's marriage. A lot. It's like it a, is a it marriage. Is a yeah, it's marriage insanity. More than and most it's not just to clear up the rumors. It's not, <laughs> we're not married, but <laughs> we're in a marriage, and it's not a marriage. Yeah. Then partners because normally partners go off and do their separate things yeah. Yeah. in the day yeah and you have to no, we creatively share and day. <laughs> we breathe the same air it's a lot but i'd say at the same time it's super important because we're like when what, an idea sparks we're like rehearsal in five like i'll meet you in the living room that's and amazing. that's really important you know we built out our studio our loft to be our home and our studio and so that's a dream. very cool it's great it's a big space same place that you moved to originally yeah, yeah. we built i mean when we moved in there wasn't even a shower like it's a very wow. industrial kind of vibe and we we built it out it's beautiful we love it we're really happy with it we built our rooms and everything but it's a big space that allowed us to have like you know we have a piano and uh-huh. we can make noise and the people in the building are all artists and are really great about it which is you know we have a lot of friends who have to have extra studio spaces and yeah. we're grateful to live in our in our studio but it's also we're living in our studio right. so it's, yeah. Yeah, it's a lot, not a lot. So much if we're not on tour yeah. if we're not on tour like very likely we will not leave the house that day yeah, yeah. and because right. everything yeah. we need is right in that <laughs> totally in that room yeah so. yeah Who's thanks for cooking? having us come up here this morning oh yeah <laughs> <laughs> thanks for getting this is your one escape yeah. of the week yeah, yeah. we were yeah. like leaving like this is what it's like in the morning <laughs> yeah <laughs> to yeah. leave the it's house yeah it's it's to go sad. to midtown of all places all right it's actually really <laughs> it's really clean and it smells better so we were like yeah that's cool. true and where you live yeah yeah <laughs> are you in bushwick mm-hmm. yeah. yeah i live yeah. in bushwick yeah it's disgusting love it <laughs> doesn't smell good yeah i did hear you ask who does the cooking and i would like to proudly say i do the it is you okay so that we can't just on the record do the ordering. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Do I do the what? The ordering. Yeah. 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 I do the dishes. That's a too. skill. Ordering yeah. is a skill. Ordering is a skill. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Come on. I know what your roles are now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if we live together, yeah. I don't, do you cook? No. Yeah. Okay. Actually, never yeah. Mind. <laughs> Sorry to presume. Fighting over ordering. That was the ordering. convenient no. thinking. Yeah. <laughs> no, but I, I, I think about this like we're great friends. If we lived together, I think it would be a challenge. Like I think it's not easy to find okay. someone. Okay. <laughs> You're like okay. I think I think it would. I don't know. Let me think about that. You'd be surprised. Not easy to find a, a companion. Yes. That you can spend as much time as you spend. Yeah. And that's all. And then, and. And, I think and be creative. That's I think true. Yes. I'm. I always marvel when like two people can just like have an amazing easy creative relationship let Mm -hmm. alone spending all that time together but have you run into issues in creating music yeah all the time but i think our relationship and their closeness of of living actually like fuels and informs Mm -hmm. our writing Mm -hmm. and how how we're treating our growth i think our music isn't super it's kind of there's ten a lot of tension um it's not super like easy listening maybe per se it's a lot of like intense stuff going on with crazy violin and you know just kind of us kind of in a battle in a way and i think that's um, you know it's representative of how we kind of interact and it's so Mm -hmm. it's important because it kind of feel and we like that yeah we hopefully like that but yeah, I'd say it's, it's like if you're having a fight over doing the dishes, you can yeah. hear that in yeah. the music. Yeah. You're working it out <laughs> yeah, in yeah. the violin. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, totally. Yeah, no, we have like our little things, but I think, yeah, it's kind of just important to what we're doing. Yeah. Um, and I'd say like our friendship, it's we have a friendship at the core, but now it's like so much just what we're doing for Gracie and Rachel that mm-hmm. we're not it's not even a friendship anymore. It's like we're almost just, we're like one person kind of just making this business. Like you said, yeah. you haven't had two people in here, but I feel like sometimes we're just one person yeah, in yeah. here because <laughs> we're just representing this mm-hmm. this thing, this mission that we're trying to do in this project that we're so committed to that it's just, that's our focus right now. So what is the mission? How would you describe the mission? <sighs> what is the mission? Do you have a mission statement? Mission statement. Yeah, yeah mission statement. <laughs> I'm going to make you hone it right now on this podcast. Yeah, we can workshop it. Yeah, we can workshop Yeah, let's work on this. Give us the elevator pitch. Yeah, uh, no, but yeah. Yeah, I mean, I it? think like two women coming together to make music and stand, I mean, a big part of like, I think one of our first songs was based off of a comment that somebody gave us when we were playing a show in like Utah and we hadn't really... Um, made too many songs it was one of our songs that's on the record but it somebody said to us after a show these two guys came up to us and they were like oh we really didn't expect to like you and it was such a beautiful backhanded compliment <laughs> where I was like oh man that sucks but I'm also really glad that that's how you feel because I rewarding in a it way. was really mm-hmm. rewarding and I think that's where what, what we're trying to do is is to make could to flip things on its head we don't want to we're not as overt to say like you know we're here with a message and we're gonna say Mm -hmm. these things but Mm -hmm. we also we do want to get those kind of empowering messages across but we like sneaking up on you and we like doing it 
in more like kind of mysterious, mysterious nuanced ways. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Hopefully. And even just like musically as like a, a classical violinist that really did grow up in that organized kind of traditional um, path, I want to just try and be forward and and like I don't know let it be known that you can have that kind of structure and take it in a different direction and Mm -hmm. and make that decision for yourself and have like a partner who's gonna support that Mm -hmm. and help you navigate wanting to you know bend the rules a little bit Mm -hmm. yeah yeah what was your like dream or idea for violin were you imagining like going into the classical world or what I think for talking? a while, I mean, it was hard for me to know through high school and college. I obviously was embedded in the system, and um, I always felt, you know, like, what if I didn't resolve that seventh to an <laughs> octave? Like, what if I what if I didn't do that? Would I be accepted? Yeah. <laughs> um, and I stole her. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think I was just in the practice room. I was still, and I still am dedicated to practicing and etudes like I I stand behind the structure and diligence that that gave me my facility but I would say I think I just started exploring with my little earbuds you know like Gracie would send me songs on the piano and be like hmm what could I do there and like I don't know just adding dissonances where you don't expect them and feeling like you you can just run with an idea and um, not be shy yeah there's something that like it was so scary, much, though. It was hard. Yeah, I imagine. I mean, I just feel like it must also be empowering, not only the two women, but there's something about a classical guitar, uh, violinist coming into a pop world that I feel like would be inspiring to young kids getting into music and, mm-hmm. and having different having to figure mm-hmm. out what avenue worked mm-hmm. for them. And I totally. think that's a really inspiring... Uh, yeah, I think we're trying to have those kind of conversations. Um, I go back and teach in Berkeley, where, that's where we're from at schools and I would love to bring my electronic pedal board and like show them what I you know just I don't know to have the conversation like you sure be involved in orchestra and chamber music but Uh you can also you know get on the computer and do some some cool things that can be instrumental in your in your development as well yeah so when you were starting out who were sort of models for you to say okay this can work we can make this work someone will buy this someone will you know take this and run with it like I mean we had Lindsay Sterling in here Mm -hmm. I kind of imagine like you know all of the violin (laughs) crossover Mm -hmm. you know players like black violin yeah of course yeah yeah. Um, and like the two cello guys okay right yeah so I mean I guess yeah I'd say that changed for you I was gonna say like yeah you started with like what you thought you were going to be doing and then once you got into more of the electronic elements there were new people that were, you know, making totally. you realize, okay, this could be my new mm-hmm. dream or passion yeah. or thing that I can see myself doing. I mean, you can speak to that with violinists more, but I yeah, mean, I, I think like uh, right now we're really into Agnes Obel. I don't know if you know her, but she's so. great. She's from Denmark. S- yeah. Cinematic dark. Just mm. but we like yeah. those really kind of cool things. string piano elements that uh-huh. are, are really exciting to us. Um, Early on, I think both of us would have looked to like Jan Tiersen mm-hmm. as... Um, instrumentalist uh-huh. that was Doing interesting pop? yeah yeah fusing pop but not so much yeah. electronic i don't know we're the only ones <laughs> there you go <laughs> um, no there's just so many different i don't know yeah so much now. That, i mean yeah, so i also much. loved your um Krayshon oh cover, cool mm-hmm. good <laughs> which is just a- another example of how like you know l- lyrics and music mm-hmm. is lyrics and melody and mm-hmm. you know how you play with something and it was just cool to see such a completely different take yeah. on a rap song. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Choral, like, what do you We're, call it? What 16th, century 16th century polyphony. 16th century polyphony. There you go. I was just like, let's do the Koreshan rap song. And she's like, let's make it a polyphonic. <laughs> like, we were on a beach when we wrote that. Too much it's like it. very difficult. That's specific why you're a perfect harmonies. combination. Right. Yeah. Yeah. You guys have day jobs? Not anymore. Oh, nice. nice. Congrats. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> yeah, she, like sh- she said, sometimes we're from Berkeley, so she'll go back and like teach to the school where she used to go to music school, um, nice. which mm-hmm. is great. But yeah, we're touring so much right now. Yeah, it's really, totally. really good. So you're touring with San Fermin? Yeah. Next That'll week. be next week. Mm-hmm. They're fr- friends of the podcast Definitely. and Dara's oh, cool. yeah. in particular. Yeah. 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 Uh, my band opened for them, and yeah, we're just friendly. Oh, with sweet. Who's your band? Uh, Parlor Tricks was m- the band that I sang with. Cool. Oh, cool. Yeah, awesome. we're, we're really looking forward to it. Yeah, yeah it's, it's they a seem great, great fit for you guys. Yeah, yeah that yeah. makes a lot yeah. of sense. Yeah. yeah, it'll be really fun. Yeah, we're going to the south, down to the southeast, which we haven't really done much of cool. yet. So mm-hmm. 
that'll be really interesting and new for us awesome. um yep. yeah touring has been really good we're just you know we have this record out and we're just trying to get it out it's just feels like it just came out you know in june yeah feels like yesterday but cause it's been such a long you know process of totally getting it ready so we're just excited to keep putting it out there share share share, share, yeah, share, yeah. share, share, share. how long yeah. was that process would you say like since you moved to new york um Oh, how long was the recording w- process? Or, yeah, or, or just, just even from I mean, I'd say like collecting recording. the songs, it's been like a while for us just like evolving in New York since yeah. we moved here, but yeah. really getting down to it in the past, you know, couple of years uh-huh. um, mm-hmm. and really like re- we Go went back and we remixed yeah. it and just like kind of, you know, getting new elements to, to represent where we were at because it's hard, you know, like music can be behind you and then you're doing new s- new elements live and uh-huh. you want that to represent you and you want to enjoy touring the album. So right. that's something we really focused on in the past year or so mm-hmm. before mm-hmm. releasing it. it was like, let's make this feel really current to us and relevant and keep you know keep going back and just making it bigger and then yeah yeah i released it and it's been really good so mm-hmm. yeah we get to go hang out with album. bob Thank boylan you. tomorrow so. really you're going back <laughs> that's cool we're going back to the tiny desk mm-hmm. well we just shot a tiny desk and that's coming out soon i don't uh-huh. know when this airs but yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, um <laughs> how was that nerve-wracking yeah. yeah i don't really yeah we kind of say we both just like don't Blacked remember it because it was bit. just such a <laughs> it's such a milestone yeah. Yeah. Like yeah. And it's just no pressure. You're like, I'm just like <laughs> in this place, you know, it's just, you try to be calm, but all the so taste makers are yeah, rushing you. Right, 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 right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I think I just watched like Steve Martin do one and he was kind of like, who's running NPR right now? And I just <laughs> realized like, yeah, they all kind of come flocking They're all in there. Yeah. It's so amazing. And you get to see like, just even <laughs> just seeing like right before we, we played, Bob took us on a little tour of NPR and he showed us down like all of everything that runs. It's like what you imagine like NASA looks like. Yeah. Like, yeah. All the like mm-hmm. control center. The yeah, control like, center. Oh my God, this is it. This is the public radio. It was really special. It was um, awesome. Um, but yeah, we're going to go we, do a house concert have with him. Public radio on in our house. Yeah, all the time. All do the you? Time. That's great. All the time. We have a radio, and it's I think good for we're really soul. excited that we yeah. have Grew a radio up with that. in our house. Yeah. yeah. We use our, like, radio yeah, radio. Tra- yeah, like, radio our, radio. like from our, not our record it. player. <laughs> no, yeah, like, our record player. Yep. Connect, you know, whatever. Mm-hmm, it, mm-hmm. I don't know what it's called. No. Transceptor, transmitter, transceptor. Sure. Billboard, come on. What's it called? Receiver? Receiver. Yeah, there you go. That's it. So. Stay here one more day. Yeah. So, yeah, Bob's been, about that, well, because we're going to go do a little house concert. Oh, yeah. So that'll be good. Cool. cool. Awesome. When does tour start? Uh, October 19th. Okay. Yeah. Well, so have fun. Thank you so much. Yeah. And congrats on the record. Thank Even you. Even though it was out in cool. June. It, yeah. That is very recent. It feels Yeah. Cool. We'll say oh, it's yeah. just out. It's a yeah. baby. Yeah, exactly. It's a baby. <laughs> it's just that it's very <laughs> beginning of its life. Yeah. Yeah. yeah cool. Totally. All right. Gracie and Rachel. Yeah. I feel like I should say it to both of you. Rachel. Because you're one person. So, yeah. Rachel. 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 <laughs> uh, yeah, Rachel. Uh, thanks for coming on Soul Sisters. Thank you so much Thank for you. having me. <laughs>